What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am Jay Campbell. And I'm Hunter Williams. And we are back doing another video um, on Callow Curb. Now, for those of you guys that follow this channel, and hopefully there will be newbies that don't follow this channel, Hunter and I did a video uh, about two weeks ago, actually technically three weeks ago, that just came out on the YouTube channel yesterday. And obviously, I also released a podcast with the founder or co-founder, Paul Martin, and their head science uh, officer or researcher, uh, Dr. Edward Norton, um, from Cowler Curb that released on Monday of this week. Today is, of course, Friday, January 19th. And I don't know if this video will make it. I think we're going to publish this video on Sunday, so two days from now. But uh, bottom line is we want to just address all of the massive amount of comments and uh, questions that we're getting back on this product because again, it is a game changing product. It is the, literally the world's first GLP one activating supplement, which means that it, yes, two little capsules or four little capsules or six little capsules that you swallow in a day can absolutely shut down, if not regulate your appetite and prevent you from quote unquote overeating. And as Hunter knows, if you're an intermittent faster, it's the greatest game changing supplement probably ever because it dramatically uh, enhances your ability to fast at longer intervals, which we both know. And hopefully you guys know that the longer you fast, the more uh, auto, 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 autophagy and hormetic response you will create, which will lead to more, again, fight or flight hormones and more stubborn body fat removal. Do you want to add something that before I jump in, Hunter? Yeah, I'll just give uh, my personal experience real quick, and then we'll talk about this some more <laughs> later. But uh, I just completed a 60-hour fast this week, so that was the longest I have fasted with calo curb so far and pound for pound versus terzapatide over the year plus that i've used terzapatide on and off i will say calo curb is stronger never before has there been something that can acutely suppress appetite in a way that it's like basically mental fortitude for fasting in a pill so when i want to do a longer fast like i did this week jay and i are going to mexico next week i want to make sure i'm super lean i'm already really lean but i'm going to make sure like i'm real Leaned shredded. out exactly, shredded to the bone, shredded, ready to get Healed. in the casket, ready to get in the casket next week in Mexico. But uh, you know, so I did a 60 hour fast this week, and I will say it is the easiest 60 60 hour fast I ever did. If you've ever done a longer fast like that, you know that there's intervals that you're gonna hit where it gets really, really, really challenging. And uh, just having done that this week, um, I will say pound for pound is stronger than terzapatide. But today we just wanted to kind of like go over some of the questions, comments, concerns, who's calico for. Who's it not for? Should you use it versus terms appetite and what those things are? So that's kind of what we're going to break down. All right. Today. So the first thing is, and then, and uh, and I'll share a screen because I think I have it access in my text, but we're getting tons of comments from people saying, oh my God, it's got canola oil in it. It's ew, GMO. It's a seed oil. Jay, Hunter, how could you promote something like this? So we got so many of those comments. And, and, and again, I addressed that in the podcast with Paul and Ed, uh, it's also addressed in the very super 5,000 word scientifically researched deep dive article that we just released yesterday on jcampbell.com. We'll of course link to that article in the show notes here, but Hunter reached, did a little bit of research this week and looked into the amount of uh, canola oil that's found in everyday foods, fast foods, normal foods, you know, just basically living in, in first world, you know, industrialized society. And without pulling it up on the screen, because I think it's a waste of time, you will breathe more canola oil in a day living in New York City, Houston, Atlanta, Las Vegas, Seattle, Los, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, than you will in an entire bottle of Calicurb capsules, which again are 90 capsules. This is an infinitesimal, microscopic amount of canola oil that is found in these capsules. And again, let the science guys from Calor Curb explain why they use that as a stabilizing molecule or as a stabilizing particulate in, in the, in the mixture. You know, there's talk of them using uh, virgin rapeseed oil moving forward as they continue to reformulate the product. But Hunter, just talk about it for one second to get people's minds off the idea that they're going to be poisoned by GMO and seed oils. Yeah. I think if there's anybody out there, like I talked about before my YouTube channel that got deleted, I had tons over 10 plus videos about the dangers of vegetable oils. Now is canola, I, canola oil ideal? No, but when we look at the actual content, it is basically non-caloric. I think right. in one serving, there's around one calorie in one yeah, total thing, which as we know, when we're fasting, as long as your supplements, you know, under two or three, five calories, you're going to be okay. 
Um, but I basically made, uh, did a little research this week. And then I'm sure everyone that's listening has eaten at a Chipotle or some like, you know, like fast casual place that's a little bit healthier that uses canola oil like every restaurant does. In one serving of grilled chicken from Chipotle, there is 40 times the amount of canola oil that's in one serving of Calo Curve. So if you've gone to a restaurant at any time in the last month, which I'm sure like none of us are perfect, we all go to restaurants, you're exposed to vastly more canola oil than you would this. So first of all, I just want to say it's not going to be enough that's going to like do anything whatsoever to cause enough inflammation or anything like that. And in terms of oils, you definitely have like sunflower oil, safflower oil, some of these other oils that are much more uh, toxic than canola oil. I know it is non-GMO, this pesticide-free canola oil, which is great. Um, but again, you know, it's not like we're shills for canola oil or something like right. that. But like I said, if I can fast 60 hours, think of the benefits relative right. to getting one calorie of canola oil. <laughs> it's, it pales in comparison to like what I just did for 60 hours to fast, the amount of body fat I burned, the amount of like mental inflammation that I reduced, the amount of gut inflammation that I reduced. And on top of that, you could eat a vegetable oil free diet. But do you have GLP-1 hormone being secreted by your right. stomach because right. of the food that we're eating? We know that that's a hormone that gets suppressed from the toxic food and air and water that we're consuming on a daily basis. So I think relative to, we always got to look at like risk benefit analysis of what we're doing. Yep. And if we're saying, okay, we can take this one calorie capsule a few times during a extended fast to absolutely shred fat off my body and make it super, super easy to fast, versus getting like an infinitesimal amount of canola oil. I'm going to take that every day because of the benefits that I can get from fasting. Um, and again, I'm sure not everyone on this that's watching this video, if you can go the rest of your life without eating a restaurant, more power to you. But we just know that's not all like practical. And of course, if it was avocado oil in the supplement, that would be that much better. But it just for these scientists, it's what they found to be the best stabilizing agent. So like relative to what I'm looking at. And then also too, Jay, we didn't talk about this, but compare it to the effects of terzapatide that you could get from like overusing terzapatide. Right. Is that arguably like more, not dangerous, but like what's going to be better? Can you like not be addicted to terzapatide and use a natural supplement like this versus having to go up to like 15 milligrams of terzapatide a week? Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on the canola. I am personally not worried about it because I've checked my blood sugar when I'm doing these fasts and everything. Everything's perfect. And I'm like getting extremely lean just in like. But dude, it, nobody should be worried about it. Again, it's just like people fixate and overanalyze, you know, data when we both know that like we're waveform energy beings, we're not these physical avatar bodies. So it's like, it's, you know, this infinitesimal, again, microscopic amount is not going to harm you. Now let's talk about, again, because we're getting so many co questions, comments, and criticisms about who Cal Curb is not for. So just as I told you, you know, off air, you know, I unfortunately made this mistake with our company that Nick Andrews and I sold two years ago. Can you believe dude, it's almost two years ago now? Uh, a seer, which is still out there. Don't ask me about it. I have nothing to do with it, but you know, we made obviously a revolutionary peptide regrowth and hair stoppage product called, um, Oxano grow. And what we didn't do when we were first putting it out there, you know, cause so many people thought it was like miracle, um, product for regrowing hair and it is for the right people, but we didn't tell people who it wouldn't work for. Right. And who it wouldn't work for was people with poor cellular health. Now in the same vein, you can't be a flaming human dumpster fire and weigh 400 to 500 to 600 pounds and have in massively inflamed microbiome and all sorts of other issues like insulin resistance. Again, as Dr. Rob would say, you're a metabolic emergency and expect to take one or two capsules of calicurb and it kills your appetite. You got a lot more fish to fry and bigger problems in your metabolic, uh, from your metabolic side of things or the metabolic equation side of things. So don't be those people and listen to this video or watch one of our ads or watch one of our social media pieces and saying, Oh my God, Jay Campbell's selling a new product and it's a revolutionary thing. And I'm going to go use it. It's going to change my diet and crush my appetite. Probably won't happen. It could, but if you're one of those people and you, you know, have all those check marks of bad things going on in your life, I would say, you know, buyer beware. But for those of you who are intermittent fasters, okay. Those of you who are already living an insulin controlled life, you're, you know, reducing your carbohydrate consumption, you're eating timed, you're, car you're timing your carbohydrate intake relative to when you train, post-workout, pre-workout, pre-workout. This is a profound 
appetite suppressing medication. Not only is it appetite suppressing, it also does the same things that the GLP-1 agonist injectable peptide versions do, which is increases both GLP and GIP uh, production in your microbiome, right? So it delays or, sl or slows gastric emptying. It again, suppresses your appetite. And as Hunter and I have found now after almost using this product for a close to a month now, um, it also establishes or quote unquote reestablishes the health of the microbiome to go back to where the way, way we used to be. If you consider like ancient hunter gatherer man who didn't have, you know, uh, a GMO changed microbiome or a, you know, call it a, uh, you know, uh, industrialized society contaminated microbiome, which you and I, and almost every single one of us living in modern day societies have because of all of the GMO food, the stuff that's in the skies, the stuff that's in the water, the stuff that's in the plastic. So all of these things are rebuilding, if not contaminating our microbiome from where, where it was, you know, in, in a natural setting. So, we found that using Calicurb, again, over a month period now, and both of us are using anywhere from two to six capsules a day, right? Some of us, sometimes we'll take three in the morning, three at night, excuse me, three in the afternoon. Sometimes we'll take two and two. You, when you first start, you go one-on-one -on -one to assess your tolerance. But the bottom line is it literally is slowing our appetite, even on the days that we eat. Now, obviously you guys know that Hunter and I do 30 days to shreds. That's the book and the protocol that we created. It's one of the best fat loss protocols ever given. You can find the book on Amazon. You can go to jcampbell.com and you can buy the course, whatever. But that course, or I mean, I'm sorry, that protocol, that 30 days to shreds protocol is what we follow pretty much on a day in, day out basis. So one day we fast and then the next day we eat and train. Even on our training days now, after using Calicurb for a month, our appetite is definitely much, much more suppressed. And that was in the past, not the way it normally used to be. And as Hunter and I were talking off air, when we were just using injectable, uh, GLPs like semaglutide and terzapatide, and we primarily use terzapatide and retitrutide now, we wouldn't be as suppressed on our eating days. Okay. So yeah, it worked great and still does on our fasting days, meaning terzapatide uh, or semaglutide. But then on our eating days, we would pretty much eat still with relative abandon. Whereas now Calicurb is again, increasing or regulating our microbiome to a more natural uh, position. And so now we're not as hungry, which is very, very, very interesting. So I would just say wrap up. I'll switch to Hunter in a second. But if you're if you're if you're a fat person and you're inflamed and you have severe insulin resistance, I wouldn't expect this product to dramatically suppress your appetite, similar to way a high dosage of terzapatide or semaglutide might. Now, I'm not saying it won't work for you at all, but don't use it with the expectation that it's going to be similar, if not better. Than those other two products. Now, again, we both are bigger supporters now of Calicurb than the injectable terzapatide or injectable um, semaglutide because, again, we use a very, very targeted, precise dose. And as Hunter knows, it works on the days that you use it to fast. Whereas when you're injecting the GLPs, the peptide based, you're always on, right? You've got it in your system, you've got it in your bloodstream, you've got it in your cells. Whereas this, being a natural, swallowable, orable capsule supplement, it's targeted and only working acutely on the days that you actually use it. And again, their science shows that it's metabolized over a 24 hour period. So again, you can use it on the days that you're eating if you want to, you know, minimize your appetite, or you can just use it on the days you're fasting. Both Hunter and I have been experimenting both ways, but it works equally well. And again, you know, we're all uh, end of one and biochemically unique. So what works for me and Hunter may not work for you, but again, just be, you know, smart as a user, as an end user and understand like what you're working with when you start using this supplement. Yeah. To that point too, I think who's the ideal person to use Calicurb? It's a faster. It's someone totally. that regularly like us practices alternate day fasting, intermittent fasting, um, anything that's fasting. If you've never fasted before, I don't think Calicurb is necessarily right for you. And I don't like, you're going to have to build Agreed. a habit of fasting Agreed. on your own. And then once you do that, come in and use Calicurb as an enhancer to that fast. So this, in my opinion, is like the best thing. And we've scoured the earth for almost 10 years now between both yeah. of us of like, what can we use to make our fasting optimal? And I think this is so far, absolutely hands down the best thing we've seen. And I wanted to mention this too, because a lot of people have asked us, do I use terzapatide? Do I use this? Do I use both of them? Do I use terzapatide first? Do I use this first? In my opinion, I think this is a gateway drug due to the GLP-1 uh, ecosystem of like, if I want to be exposed to what GLP-1s do, this is a very low cost, 
low barrier to entry. It's a capsule that you can take. You don't have to inject. You don't have to get a prescription for it. You can go buy it with our codes from their website. Uh, it's a very low barrier to entry way to get exposure to elevated levels of GLP-1 hormone in you. Now, you may take it. It may work amazing for you like it's worked for Jay and I. You may not see like results right away, but that's okay. It's like, okay, like I tried this. If you feel like you need more, then you can go and expose yourself to your zapatide, semaglutide, all the other GLP ones. But for me, if I was starting out, I needed to lose weight, you know, like I've like, you know, maybe 20, 30 pounds, whatever. I'm going to use this, see how I do first, see how it reduces my appetite, see how it allows me to fast for longer intervals, and then kind of assess where I can go. Use it for a few weeks, see where I'm at. If I notice a difference, notice I'm like slimming down, I'm like, okay, I can kind of maintain this. But if you feel like there's not that much results, you probably need to like go to something like a terse appetite. So in my opinion, I think people that already fast, this is just the icing on the cake to make fasting that much easier. And to also to kind of change What's so amazing about having more GLP-1 hormone is the way it changes your brain yeah. and to change your cravings. And I think it even works better for women because women have stronger cravings than men to change your cravings and how you see food so that there's less food noise. And that when you're exposed to like all the amazing goodies and stuff that you're like, eh, you know, it's nice to have, but I don't have to gorge myself or really be like, be like, feel like I'm missing out on something. So I would just say to add, and we'll wrap this video up and look, if you want to purchase this product, okay, just go to calicurb.com forward slash JC. That link will allow you to take 10% off your purchase. Again, this is a much cheaper, much more cost effective or cost efficient product than obviously buying the injectable Terz Appetite or semaglutide, which depending on whether you get it from a compound pharmacy could be 10 times that cost versus a research company, which is three to four times that cost. And again, we're not saying that those products are still not great because they are. Obviously, we're big believers in them. We wouldn't have written 30 Days to Shreds without the usage of that. But clearly, somebody said to us today on a call that you guys need to go in and re-edit 30 Days to Shreds to put Kyle Curb in the book. And we we're like, you know what? That's actually a really good idea because this is an amazing alternative. But um, if you're an intermittent faster, as Hunter said, he's 100% accurate you should be a faster before you really purchase this product. Okay. This is not a product to just say, Oh, I want to kill my appetite when you have, you know, uh, massive insulin resistance and inflammation and belly fat, right? Like this is a product for people that are already regularly fasting and who dramatically want to improve their fasting. But if you're somebody who's been doing fasting for 14 to 16 hours for say three to five years, or even maybe seven to 10 years, and you've hit a plateau. And we talk about this obviously in the book. This is the product to take that 14 to 16 hour fast to 18 to 22 hours. So you're going to increase that four hours that you've never been able to fast because you're hangry or hungry or you feel like shit or you got, you know, stuff going on in the microbiome. This product is going to get you there. So I highly recommend, again, if you are a person that is using an IF lifestyle or a fasting lifestyle, and maybe you're doing what we do, which is an alternate day program or fasting program. This is a great product to extend the fasting window, which as Hunter knows, will ex allow you to burn more stubborn body fat through catecholamine release, which is again, fight or flight hormones, which, you know, obviously mobilizes stubborn fat by enhancing blood flow and of course, hormonal output. And this is the product for you. So, I mean, that's basically, you know, all we got uh, for Jay Campbell. I'm Hunter Williams. We will see you guys very soon. Have an amazing day. See you guys.